Monica and welcome to our show The Awaited which is dedicated to coming to understand uh, the Imam of our time, alayhi salam, uh, better. And in this program we're going to be exploring what inshallah will happen after he arrives. Obviously we have discussed um, some of the signs before that will lead up to his emergence uh, but we're going to be again looking at them in a little bit more detail. And inshallah, this show will be in two parts. So part one is looking at uh, some of the signs and looking at the mission of the Imam uh, and uh, exploring exactly what is going to happen um, when he reappears. My guest is Brother Sajjad Jihad. And we, well, I wanted to welcome you first. Thank you. Um, it, there are books on with you know that do have uh, narrations um, with you know that, that talk about the imam and also what will happen to him, and some of these are um, quite scattered and sometimes it's difficult to get a real clear picture of exactly what is going to happen in this period. It's a bit vague for many of us that he's coming and we know that he's going to rule, but we don't know exactly sort of the the details. Um, just one thing I, I, I wanted to, to raise, which perhaps many of us uh, might, might not be aware of, or many of the viewers might not be aware of, that um, actually testifying, according to some sources, testifying um, to the existence of Ima the Imam was something that took place in the realm of Alast. It was part of the covenant with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Um, as it says here, um, God made the prophets take an oath saying to them, am I not your Lord? Is not Muhammad here my messenger? And is not Ali not uh, the prince of believers? The prophets answered yes and prophetic, prophetic status was firmly established for them and God made those who are endowed with firm resolution take an oath saying, um, I am your Lord, uh, Muhammad is my messenger, Ali is the prince of believers, his heirs O Siyah, who are after him, the responsible directors of my order and the guardians of my treasures of my knowledge and the Mahdi is he through whom I will carry my religion to victory, through whom I will show my power, through whom I will take vengeance on my enemies, and through whom I will be worshipped whether they will or not. Um, and the prophets of firm resolution answered, we affirm and we uh, bear witness. Actually it says the prophets of firm resolution, so I don't know if all the spirits in, in the previous realm testified that this was part of, of the covenant, testifying to, to Allah and his oneness. Well we have... Uh we have in our uh, narrations from the holy imams that we existed before the physical bodies on this earth so uh, we were uh, shown certain truths and given a chance to elevate our status before coming down on this earth and this is why one person becomes of high stature and not why one person becomes a prophet and, and somebody yeah. else doesn't why one became an imam and you know, if you gathered the billions of people, I think the estimate recently was about 80 billion humans uh, have lived until wow. now. So throughout uh, history, yeah. about 80 billion. Those 80 billion, even with, if we take generations, let's say we have 120,000 uh, prophets, 124,000 prophets. If we take the amount of imams, if we take the people of high stature, companions and scholars and so on, they wouldn't number more than a million. Uh, yeah. and compare that to 80 billion, it's, it's a huge yeah. difference. So why is it that some got such a station and rank and the majority did not? And it is because Allah makes man free in his choices. Uh, he knows the result of things, mm. but that doesn't influence that you have freedom to do things. So before we came to this earth, God knew the result of what we were. And so in a way, he allowed us to choose what we're going to do. And one time where this happened was before we were born yeah. and the second is when it's playing out now yeah. and that's why from then he knew or he, he could show who was going to be a prophet and who was not right. which was why people uh, the angels were expecting prophets the angels were expecting people to come along of, of, of high rank or the opposite of the worst of people because they were given a chance to see this before uh, mm -hmm. our physical uh, birth here mm -hmm. and I think it's, it's purely a matter of, of free will and certain factors influencing our souls, our nafs, our body, our minds, genetics plays a role, environment plays a role, upbringing plays a role, uh, the time that we're born in plays a role yeah. as well. So I think it's, it's, it's so complex. I would think more than 300 individual factors affect how we, what, how we turn out to be. And I think that's just God's mercy in giving man uh, control over certain things and him dictating certain things. Yeah, that's, that's uh, a good point about his mercy in, yeah, 
in that uh, in some ways uh, there are certain patterns or paths laid, laid out for us and you could say all it is is for just to, for us to recognize those signs right. of of that path um, something that um, again people who who may be even curious about the teachers of Ahlul Bayt al um uh, will say that you know, according to followers of Ahlul Bayt, they say that the Imam will will avenge. You know, one of his mm -hmm. uh, roles will be to avenge. For example, what happened to Imam Hussein mm -hmm. as here Imam Sadiq um, has said in Al Kafi, any time one of you has the desire to see Al Qa'im, then you should desire that while you are in a good spiritual state, since mm -hmm. surely Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala sent Muhammad as a mercy. Peace be upon him and his family, but will send Al Qa'im as an avenger. So, um, will he just avenge Imam Hussein alayhi salam? I mean, what exactly, who, you know, is he going to avenge? Who is he going to be fighting against? Well, with the narrations, uh, the most uh, narrated of those regarding the mission of the Imam, it says that he will fill the earth with justice uh, after it has been filled with oppression. Yeah. Um, so that the number one aim in a way is to make the earth a just place for humans to live in somewhere where people are not oppressed so that's the first uh, uh, shall we say aim of the Imam's appearance the second um, if we refer to one of the narrations that we have that says uh, he fights for the Sunnah the establishment of the or the return of the Sunnah as the Prophet fought for its establishment mm. so in a way he he comes so that people will know what true religion is in this way I think he is uh, avenging the Imam's Imam Hussein's death uh, but in a similar way in terms of the Imam died so that people will know what real Islam is yeah the Imam Sahib Zaman will, re will return reappear to show people again what real Islam yeah. is and uh, uh, I think it's not an issue of oh he's my grandfather I'm here to avenge his death right, right. and take retribution on people I don't think it's a it's that type of meaning yeah. the avenge here is to avenge the wrong done to Islam by people not knowing mm. what the real religion is and the Imam will come to avenge the death of Al Hussein in terms of Hussein did his best to show people what real Islam is and he protected Islam but over a period of time the amount of oppression that goes on puts a, a veil of what real yeah. religion is so the Imam will return to avenge the death of Al Hussein in terms of showing people let's remove this veil uh, and it says here in the narration that Al Mahdi Rajulun min Asrati yuqatil ala sunnati kama qataltu ana ala al wahi uh, narration is in the Nabi and Muaddif of the Qunduzi and Sawa'at al Muhraqa for Ibn Hajar. So, from the non Ahl al Bayt sources. That Can you translate that for our viewers? It, the, the narration says that uh, Al Mahdi is from my family. Uh, he will fight for the Sunnah as I fought for revelation. Right. As I fought for the revelation and yeah. the, 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 the initial uh, uh, news of Islam, the Mahdi will fight for showing people what the real Sunnah is. Um, and I think that's that's more what the avenging mentioned here mm -hmm. is about. Um, it just reminds me of um, again a, a narration, um, which again is found in I think it was even found in the tafsir of um, Fakhreddin Razi, I believe, but where um, the the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says again, you know, um, um, there will be someone who will come after me, who will fight for the implementation of this. Uh, religion just Absolutely. as I fought for its revelation Absolutely. and it's the man who will come in mending the the shoe and Imam Ali and Islam 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 comes Islam. in yeah and he says in Battle of Safi when the Qurans were raised as a trick and he they people are saying that uh, you know these people have raised the Quran why are we fighting for yeah. them and the Imam says that is a non-speaking Quran I am the speaking walking talking Quran I will tell you everything about this Quran you should listen to me and you know, not follow this kind yeah. of trick. I am fighting for the interpretation of this one, yeah. which is exactly what the Prophet said mm -hmm. would happen. So it seems in that way that uh, that the Imam of our time is again uh, fulfilling um, that role, Asante. continuing Asante. that Asante. role. Asante. Yeah. Of course, we can't forget as well that the, one of the slogans of the Imam's revolution is Ya Litharat al Hussein, O to avenge al Hussein. So we can't deny the element that Imam al Hussein died an oppressed person yeah. and for the uh, words of Allah to be made true that the earth will be filled with justice then surely justice will have to be done yeah. for Imam Hussein so we won't take that out of the element that does that is a part of Imam's revolution but it isn't the sole reason why the Imam is rising mm -hmm. and uh, also as you said you mentioned the word uh, revolution what what is this uh, I mean I don't know what we could call some people might call his his arrival and his actions um, 
a movement or a revolution mm -hmm. or a restoration. Um, I mean, obviously, in the narrations, it does talk about restoration, restoring Islam to, to, to what it was before. So what, how should we kind of envisage um, his actions, the, the, you know, the, the effects that will result from, from his arrival? I think it's an, an, an element of all three. It's a, it's a revolution in itself. It's bringing back original Islam. And I think it's a, a new form of governance as well. So uh, it's, it's all elements of all three. And I think it works in stages. The Imam rises up, it is a revolution. Yeah. The Imam comes back to uh, break the shackles of the, the, the oppressive leaders that have a hold of, of, of this earth. Um, and he rises up for the rights of the people who have been downtrodden. We have a narration in, in, uh, in Arshad uh, that the Imam will come after a trial for humankind. After people have suffered, the Imam will come and try to uh, make better the situation of the people. Now that would only happen through a revolution, it wouldn't happen by itself. Yeah. Things won't get better for humankind unless you have an external factor, a, a revolution of some sort. And it says here that uh, in, in Kitab al-Rashad, Shaykh al-Mufi, yeah. one of the most uh, well-known books, this is the English uh, version, that the Imam al a narration from Muhammad ibn Muslim, who's one of the, the good companions, a lot of narrations from him, um, and this is the chain that uh, Sheikh al Mufid himself mm -hmm. narrates uh, through Imam Sadiq that says, Before the coming of the Qa'im, there will be a trial from God. And he says to the Imam, What is the trial? What will happen? And he recites the verse from Surah Al Baqarah that says, Let us test you with fear. Allah says, Let us test you with fear, with hunger and with lack of money, and of lives and of harvests. Good news will come to those who are steadfast. So, Awaiting good news is something yeah. that comes after a difficult trial, yeah. difficult period. Then he said, the Imam said, the fear will be from the kings of the time. The hunger will be as a result of exorbitant prices. The lack of money will be due to the failure of trade and the scarcity of surplus goods. The lack of lives will be because of swift death. The lack of harvest will be due to the great rains and of little benefit they bring to the crops. For it, for the situation to get better, you need an external factor like a revolution. Things yeah. won't improve yeah. all of a sudden by themselves. We've seen what goes on in, in today's world, similar to what's being mentioned here. Credit crunches, which is the failure of trade, poor harvest, which is environmental damage yeah. that we're doing, fear from the rulers. Again, fear from the rulers. The yeah. rulers won't turn good by themselves. Yeah. It needs a, a stage of revolution, which is the first. The second will be uh, showing people what Islam is. So once you've broken the shackles of oppression, the rebirth of Islam, mm -hmm. showing people what the real religion is. Narrations saying that Isa alayhi will pray behind the Imam, the Christians will become Muslim. This is because the Imam will show them what real Islam is. Uh, even the, the true meanings of the Quran, people uh, close to the time of the Imam will have forgotten what the yeah. Quran really is about. Yeah. They will yeah. misunderstand, misinterpret the Quran. So the Imam will come back and show people, Muslims and non-Muslims, look, this is the real religion. So this is the rebirth element uh, of it. And the third is he will establish what the narration says, Dawlat uh, al-Haq, that the, um, the state or the, the government of truth. And in it, uh, the Imam will rule in a new way that nobody has ever right. seen before, in a way that maybe uh, a small period, I mean, he was able to do, and in a small part of the land, yeah. the Prophet, in a small area. But the Imam will be able to establish it over the entire world, a government of truth, a government of conviction, a government of uh, true uh, religion. Mm -hmm. And in this, we will see for the first time what humans are really capable of, what they can really become. Uh, and the Imam here, will, the third method will be to show people that uh, this is justice through governance. This is the way people should rule, this is the way people should behave. Narrations saying that the Imam will be very generous mm -hmm. with what he gives. Narrations say that, uh, it's in Kamal al-Din, the narrations there say that people will struggle to give zakah. Because people will be in such a good condition, they don't have anyone to give zakah mm -hmm. to. Because of the justice and equality that is practiced, people won't be able, there's no poor people in yeah. in a way. So these are the three stages. I think one follows the other. We can't say it happens at the same time. And we can't say only one of them happens. Revolution, rebirth, mm -hmm. and establishing the, 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 the state of equality. That's interesting what you say about revolution as well, because again, some of the narrations are, are saying that um, he will uh, um, arrive uh, suddenly, um, you know, like a comet in the sky or, you know, Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, and, and this is something that does happen with uh, when we see attempts to um, throw off um, oppressive governments. I mean, there might be, obviously there's a build-up to, to that moment, but then often it happens in, in a very um, sudden 
uh, way. That's and right. this was one of the, the characteristics that's right. uh, I saw that's right. his yes. arrival. Yes. Um, well, inshallah, we can uh, continue after the break. You're watching The Awaited, and uh, we're just looking at what will be the nature of the Imam's uh, reappearance, alayhi salam, and uh, what will be the events. We're going to take a, a short break, so inshallah, we'll see you again after. Um, it, there are books on with you know that do have uh, narrations um, with you know that, that talk about the imam and also what will happen to him, and some of these are um, quite scattered and sometimes it's difficult to get a real clear picture of exactly what is going to happen in this period. It's a bit vague for many of us that he's coming and we know that he's going to rule, but we don't know exactly. Uh, but we're going to be again looking at them in a little bit more detail. And inshallah, this show will be in two parts. So part one is looking at uh, some of the signs and looking at the mission of the imam uh, and uh, exploring exactly what is going to happen um, when he reappears. My guest is Brother Sajjad Jihad. And we, well, I wanted to welcome you first. Thank you. and welcome to our show The Awaited which is dedicated to coming to understand uh, the Imam of our time alayhi salam uh, better and in this program we're going to be exploring what inshallah will happen after he arrives obviously we have discussed um, some of the signs before that will lead up to his emergence